Welcome everybody. So um, Kelly Roll will be doing our presentation today on handling bindery and repair for, this is again, circulation staff primarily. So how are you going to handle stuff on your end? And with that, I will pass the torch to Kelly. All right. Um, right now, I have a feeling you're looking at children's books. So let me get over to the slide deck instead. I would rather talk about children's books, but that's okay. Uh, so let me just mention the fact that these particular set of instructions are very much a work in progress. Uh, technical services still has some unanswered questions. But when I spoke to Jeanette about it, she said to go ahead and at least give you guys a preview of what it's going to be like. But make sure that you understand that this is preliminary. The instructions can change. Um, there can be um, additional uh, additions as people figure out things more. So, um, by the end of today's training, you will theoretically know how to create a new record for a new volume. Uh, and you will know how to um, send items needing record corrections to other departments, specifically material going to collection care, and then also material departing uh, for the bindery. Okay, and then uh, since this is sort of a continuation of last week's session or a companion to last week's session, I'm going to do what I did before. So I'm going to show you slides first, and then we're going to go into um, uh, folio inventory itself. So um, what we're going to talk about is how to add basically enumeration to a serial record. So I'm hoping by now most of you are comfortable or at least familiar with using the inventory app. Um, in this case, because I'm working with serials, I'm actually going to select holdings to look up my title. You could just as easily do instance or item if you feel more comfortable on it. Um, you're going to search the serials title, then you're going to click on it. And then on the far right side, you get um, various holdings. And at first this seems a little intimidating, but I can tell by looking that um, you have, it's very similar to Symphony in some respects. So I can see that I have Sal, three to page page to green. So I suspect that this is a West yes, title. Another link, Jeff. Check okay. it in now. Okay, Thank you. Um, then I have the holdings that are actually in my stacks. Um, there are additional holdings at Sal three stacks that are not West materials. And then electronic, we're going to ignore. And then finally, education puts some of their current American School Board journals on the reference shelf. So initially, it's going to be a little confusing when you look at this, um, but I think you will get used to um, viewing the different sets of holdings. So once you've done that, so I actually want to add a, a new volume to our uh, education reference shelf. So I'm going to select um, add an item to the holdings that say green SSRC education ref. So I'm going to add that. At the next screen, you're going to see several things that you may or may not need to fill in. So item HRID, that's going to be filled in automatically. You don't have to worry about it. You do need to put in a barcode. And you're not going to use accession number or item identifier. Slightly farther down the screen, uh, you're going to choose material type. In this case, I'm referring to a periodical, so I'm going to choose material type periodical. And then, and this is going to be the hardest part for people, is you do not use call number type, call number prefix, call number, call number suffix. 
totally ignore that. If you take nothing else from this session, do not use these uh, fields here. Pardon me. If you have a number of pieces, so occasionally Coverly will have a CD-ROM that we're going to put with the, the volume to be bound, we would put two number of pieces. Where you do, pardon me, I went a little too fast, where you do want to pay attention is this enumeration data. So what you're going to put in enumeration is what you would num normally put after the subfield Z. So you're going to put volume 38, 2024, whatever your volume is, and you put it here in enumeration. Then um, th we're still going down that very long um, page. Conditions and tags, don't use it. Um, metadata has still has questions as to how they're going to be used. Item notes, add as appropriate. Um, I'm not sure what those item notes would be, but um, you might know better for your own unit. And finally, save and close to make sure that you save everything. And the one thing that I did forget to mention way back up here is after you find your holdings where you want to add item, um, you would click on that and then at the next screen in the top right hand corner is actions and you want you would probably um, not have to use edit but if you need to you can always go back and do that so having explained all that and i prefer to look at it from here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to holdings I'm going to type in American School Board Journal. And you can notice that uh, Folio is a little fussy occasionally, so it had a little burp there, but I did indeed find American School Board Journal. I'm going to go over here now. This is what you saw on the slide, and I want to add holdings to our reference shelf. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to click on Add Item. And remember, Item HRID is going to be um, done automatically by the system. So now I'm going to add my call or uh, barcode. Sorry about that. I'm going to totally not pay attention to accession number or item identifier. What I am going to do is I'm going to select material type. This is a periodical, okay? I'm totally not going to pay attention to copy number, call number type, call number prefix, call number, call number suffix. In this case, I don't have to worry about number of pieces, uh, but here is where I'm going to put, I don't actually know what the real volume is because I, neglected to look at what our last bound volume was. But for purposes of demonstration, I'm going to say it's volume 100, 2014. And you'll note that I did not put in the subfield Z because you don't need to do that. So now I'm going to continue slowly down. Condition, don't have to worry about this. Um, item notes, as I say, you could put something uh, on if you needed to. Yes. Can I, can I ask, when you do the barcode, barcode, so we just scan the barcode, is that right? You can scan the barcode. I don't have a barcode scanner at my desk. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. There's a couple of questions also, Kelly, maybe after you finish up. Okay, sure. With those folks, so. 
So permanent loan type should generally be can circulate. And I'm not gonna worry about temporary loan type because I send my material directly to the bindery. Uh, and permanent loan location, I'm actually going to defer to Harold about this at some point, but in this case, I do, if I'm Green Library, I send my material over to collection care. So I would probably put in temporary location collection care at this stage, though you can do it at any point in time that works best for your. Unit. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this uh, in the second part, but you're you're not going to try and figure out what subunit in collection care you, it's going to. You're just going to use Sewell TS collection care when it re reaches collection care. They will then follow through and make changes as needed. And so finally, you would save and close. Though I am going to have Laszlo uh, ask some questions or well, uh, read uh, the uh, questions. Yes. Yeah, it looks like now nah, the folks have their hands up. So Alex and then Danielle. So Alex, go ahead and ask your question. Um, when you did the enumeration, uh, you had a lowercase v for volume. Is, is that what we're going to be doing now? Or is it, should it be an uppercase v? Or does it matter? Uh, it should be uh, probably uppercase V. That's a good question. Okay, thank you. Okay. Danielle? Yeah, I just wanted to double check. So you put the volume and the, and the chronology all in the enumeration field. So we yes. wouldn't be separating them out by enumeration, chronology, and volume. Not like we do typically. Yeah, no, not according to the instructions Jeanette okay. initially wrote out. Okay, all right, I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Ellie? Yes? Um, I think I can, I can clarify the, the permanent location in the item, we, we will not use that. Okay. Uh, my understanding is that, um, It'll be taken it, from the holdings. Yeah, the, so if there's no permanent location in the item, then it, it kind of uh, inherits the location from the holdings. Okay, and great. So the, it, I think it originally they planned to migrate that, but they changed their mind, I think. If anyone here knows I'm wrong about any of this, it's, they can speak up. But uh, And I think there will be an exception where the Southie transfer program We'll put that in the item record for certain things transferred to Salty and not for things we're creating. Um, the, the other thing I want to ask about is uh, the number of pieces. Um, if I remember correctly, what we were told here is that we should we should put in one. Uh, if it's one, we should put that in and not leave it blank. Okay, I did not know that. Uh, I can double check that okay. and, and get back to you, but that, that was, I think, the last thing that I was told. Okay. And as I said at the very beginning, this is very much uh, a workflow that is in process, so you can tell that we don't know some of the information. Now, and for- the, the other thing is um, the, the question about the capitalized, capitalized caption and enumeration. Um, that's been like a subject of hot debate in metadata about whether it should be capitalized or not. I don't think it's really settled. Oh, um, cool. cool. <laughs> I think we were kind of thinking that like if, if there's existing items where it's capitalized because Symphony mandated that it be capitalized. So there might be existing items where it's capitalized that we might try to be consistent so that it cosmetically, it doesn't look, you know, yeah. Okay. Like when people look at the item list, it doesn't look like some are capitalized and some not, and maybe people think that it has different meanings. Um, but I, I don't think it's decided because okay. we never had this option before. Like in Symphony, you never had the option. So. Okay. All right. Just so, on a just on a side for Harold, if if you could double check on the pieces because 
I, and I'll check too, but my understanding is if there's anything in that field that will pop up a checkout note for everybody who's checking out that item. So if it says one piece, it's gonna force a person to look every single time and basically get rid of that dialogue. So I'll, I'll double check to make sure that's the case with one piece. But if you could confirm that and get back to me, that'd be great. I will ask too, and I would be very happy if we don't have to put it in. <laughs> I, but I, I guess, I guess, uh, you know, in Symphony, it it does put it in. So in Symphony, yeah. the default is one. So I guess that means the the migrated things will have the one, but I'm not sure about that either. Yeah, the migrated right. ones should have it because we're just pulling data from Symphony. But, okay, I'll try to find out. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, and I have one more question, if it's okay. Um, it, it's similar to one the one that's in chat. It's just what will be the format for volume number and year? Are we going to use semicolons or colons to separate? Are we using commas to separate them? Are we just writing it out in one long string? Um, is the spacing matter? I know in in workflows, this was you know, very regulated. So I, I just want to make sure, you know, if we ever have to add a piece that, you know, we're doing it in the correct format or standard. And once again, I don't have the answer to this um, because th this is a very theoretical process at this time, but this is good questions for um, technical services specifically to give us um, guidance on. Oh, good. Thank you, Jeanette. Okay. Um, so I'm going to save and close now. And now what I want to do is go back to education reference. And this is the one that I created. Um, I'm not quite sure why there's one in Law Basement because I did not do that one. Um, that's really interesting. But as you can see, because I'm saying, okay, I'm gonna let Collection Care uh, send this piece to the bindery for me. I did put in a temporary location and it is showing here. So I think I do, I do want to stop and really have people ask additional questions if they have them, particularly since we have both Jeanette and uh, Harold in the meeting today. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Danielle. So if we are creating one for CPR, would we still use only the temporary location or would we, we make CPR the the yeah um, the current periodicals in green? Would we would we make that their effective location? So you're talking about items that are staying in C like uh your binding or um barcoding say separately uh number one, two, three, and four because they're big enough. Yeah, or, or we're sending them from South CPR to South three, something like that. Um, in either of those cases, would we would we then use the permanent location, or would we use the temporary? Uh, you would not use the permanent location. Um, temporary location is really if you're sending material to other units. So if if you're sending it to South three. Um, I'm wondering if you should actually build the record on Sal 3, the holding Sal 3 stacks. I don't know. Uh, yeah, we would, we would have to add the holdings to Sal 3. Um, and then, um, but if they originally in CPR, so would we then delete it, delete that holding from CPR and then add one to Sal 3? um or how would that process work well if yeah. if you're holding it in cpr for a while like it's sitting in cpr and it's not immediately going to south three 
I guess I'm trying to figure out. Um... Oh, no, like right now we're in a, we're doing a great big project where we're, we're switching ones over and some, some of the CPR we only hold for the first year. Uh, and then after that, we send them to cell three, you know, okay. like we retain them in CPR, you know, for, for a year, and then um, send them at when the new shoes come in um, to cell three. Sometimes we send them to be bound and then they go to cell three, but sometimes we send them direct to cell Okay, three. so then my next question would be, if if they're hanging out for a year and then you send them to cell three, are you allowing the uh, script that runs when we send materials to cell three run? Are you changing the location to cell three in Symphony now before you send it out? Yes, we are. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to let Jeanette and Harold answer your question because we don't do that. We um, actually let the script change uh, from education to South Ree. Yeah, I'm actually surprised to hear you're manually changing it because when things are sent to South Ree, if they're barcoded, we usually like to rely on the accessioning process to transfer the item unless there's some sort of special location it needs to end up in to be cell three. So they weren't barcoded previously um, because they were in CPR. So what we're doing is barcoding them and sending them to cell three. So and it's part of a project we've been working on with uh with Brigida. So presumably in that regard, if it was the last item that was being transferred you would need to transfer over the holdings, but if you still have something in CPR, you would still need a CPR holdings in folio. So you would then just add your item to cell three and an in process. So it's always the question of should it be transferred or just added to cell three? Because if it's transferred, it will get a transfer note. And if you just add it to cell three, there's really no way to know where it came from. So a lot of people do like Kelly was saying, but if you are adding them directly to cell three, you would just add the item to the cell three holdings and then the temporary location. Okay, thank you. Juanita? Okay, let's see if I remember my question. Um, oh yeah, so what we do when we send things directly to the bindery is we have like, um, there'll be four issues like it gets published quarterly or something and we will bind it into one volume so we create a new item record or instance whatever you call it um, for that one thing that's going to the bindery and then withdraw all the four others um, the old item records that were for each individual thing um, that presumably will be something easy to do in folio question mark I think you would have to suppress the individual issues once you bind. And we'll be taught, we'll be taught, um, oh, I hear my voice. Um, we'll be taught how to do that at some point. Well, it de once again, this is somewhat dependent on what technical services will allow us to do. They may mm -hmm. ask that data control do it. I'm not, once again, not sure. Okay. Okay, um, other questions? If we did uh, do something wrong, can we redo that? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean when redo it. So can uh, we just cancel it and do it again? One, but once you hit save and close, there's no going back. But if let's say I made a mistake on the volume. So let me go back to my green education reference. So I'm going to go down and I'm like, oh, this shouldn't have been volume 100. It should have been volume 99. Then I can click on the individual barcode, go up to actions, edit. And I can go down here and yes, I can change it here. 
And I can also, if I need to change some of these other things that we're allowed to change. Did that answer your question? I'm not sure it did. Yes, thank you. Okay, okay. Hi, you're awfully weak. Hi, I have a question about the center location. Okay. Okay. Um, for boundary, so we send to the boundary. When the bull come back, when those uh, band bull come back, do we need just discharge, or for those temporary location, is going to change, or have to visit? Uh, uh, so that's what I'm going to talk about um, in the next segment because you're at art, correct? Oh yes. I'm okay. So yes, um, there is a whole procedure for if you're sending materials to collection car collection care for the binding. Yes. Okay. Um I'm going to go to the next section if everybody's okay for right now. And I can answer um the question that Jeff just asked. So I'm of course, went all the way back up. And so here, so if you're sending material directly to the bindery, very straightforward. It's exactly as we do in Symphony. You click on the checkout app, you type in your bindery pseudo patron, like edu-bindery, art-bindery, whatever. And then you scan, type in the items and pack and send to the bindery as usual. But if you're like, um, art and you you actually send your materials to collection care what you're going to have to do ah sorry you must add a temporary location to the item you're sending and so um in last week's session, I showed you a very quick and fairly straightforward way to add a temporary location for collection care using bulk edit. And you can go back and review um, those here. And what you're going to do is you're going to change the temporary location for the items you're sending to Sewell TS collection care, regardless of the type of work that's going to be done over there. And this is just a demo, and I'll go back in and demo this very quickly. Um, and then once you've changed that temporary location, you're going to check in, or as we used to call it, discharge the item. It's going to go in transit to collection care. You pack it up. Um, collection care receives it. And depending on what type of work is being done, they're going to change that Sewell TS collection care to um, either the bindery prep in your case. Um, if I'm sending something for a book jacket, they're gonna change that temp location to book jacket, or they're gonna change it to case make, depending. And they have not yet decided if they will check in the material before changing the temp location or change the temp location. Uh, and then check the material in. But once it's checked in, it will show as being over in collection care. Um, and they will then, if it's being sent to the binary, they have two pseudo patrons, just as they do now. So they'll take your material, they'll check it out um, via their pseudo patron and send it to the binary as usual, once it's returned and they've completed their work, they're gonna remove the temporary location, check it in again and put it in transit to the owning library. So I'm gonna go back to inventory and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my poor uh, American School Board journal again. And before I go on, I do need to mention that most people do not yet have permissions to do this. So this is strictly a demo today. And um, hopefully uh, within the near future, we will have um, better rewritten documentation. 
but let's say that um, once again, I want to send American School Board Journal directly to collection care for binding. So I'm going to go to actions. I'm going to edit. And then I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the screen. And I'm going to put in collection care. So before it probably had nothing, but I wanted to go in. So I'm going to go Sewell TS collection care. And I need to get rid of my little screen there. I'm going to grab the barcode real quick again. Oh, control C. I'm going to save and close. And then once I do that, I'm going to check it in. And you can see it's now in transit to collection care. Um, Laszlo, do you happen to have as a service point collection care? Um, I do. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put this barcode in um, chat, and then I'm going to have you. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen, and then I'm gonna have you show what it looks like on the collection care end. Sure. Let me just switch over here. Okay. Barcode. Okay, folks. So from this is folio, should be familiar with it at this point. Um, you'll notice that my service point is collection care. Um, you may or may not have all the service points. Um, you will get the service point assigned to you that you work at. Um, because I'm an admin, I get to get all the service points I want. So basically I've switched to collection care and now I'm gonna pretend that I'm someone at collection care. I'm gonna grab that barcode that Kelly just gave me, enter it, check it in. And now the location says Sewell TS collection care. Um, it's available here, which, means that someone could theoretically request it through search works um, but now it is fully in collection care it's not in transit um, yeah and that's what you would do and then can you do me a favor and take that same barcode and mm -hmm. go into inventory change the temp look yep all right so I go into item and I use the barcode. Whoops. Oh, that's that should have worked. I'll have you look up American School Board Journal. All right, that's fine. <laughs> Weird. Yep. Well, we are doing some, some work in Folio right now, so we're getting ready to took some major testing wow all right i think that's just a temporary glitch with folio but it burped yeah let me wait for it to refresh here come on baby you can do it there we go okay. What was it again? American School Board Journal. School board. Oh. Uh, yeah, you need to put a, a space between school and board. Oh, oops. Sorry. There we go. Well, does that look right? No. <laughs> wow, I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, let me try the item again and see if I can get the barcode to work this time. So. I'm in test. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Something's happening. Um, it's possible that I've got like multiple windows open. Let me close a couple and see if that'll free up some bandwidth. Hold on a second here. Uh, let's close that. Close that.
Yeah, I think it's my my Firefox is, is lugging the system down. There we go. All right, let's try it one more time. And if not, then I'll just have to pass the torch back to you. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You want to change it to barcode, item barcode? Yeah, my uh, it's obvious that Firefox is okay. It's being a pill. Okay. Yeah. All right. I apologize, but I'm. Oh wait, let me try. It. See if I can get this going here. One last shot, and if that doesn't work, then I'll just pass it on to you. Okay. No, sorry about that. Sorry, folks. Um. Yeah. Unfortunately, I won't be able to demo how to change that, but. Okay. Uh, That's okay. We know how Folio is at this point. We're still testing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I will reshare my screen. All right. So uh, we're in the land of imagination at this point in time. And we're going to pretend that my service point is collection care. and that I'm in collection care now. So I, collection care staff member, am now going to come. We know that this is gonna to go to the bindery. So I am going to find Sewell TS collection care bindery shelf, bindery prep shelf and save and close. Okay. And that's, that's the more straightforward part of this demonstration. Um, I want to go back to something Jeanette just wrote um, where she said that we should not delete anything. Um, so Jeanette, I was unaware that we were even able to delete anything. Yeah, there's the possibility to delete items and holdings, but as of right now, we're not sure all of the ramifications for search works. So okay. it doesn't always get the signal of take this item away from search works. So we need to look into timing and rules around it. So in Juanita's case, she would send those four individual barcodes to data control and let you guys deal. Yeah, for now, that seems like the best plan, and we'll see going forward. Okay, and then um, Science asked if, do you change the status at any point if there's a hold on the item and we have sent it to collection care repair? No. The, the request will remain regardless of where it is. Okay. Kelly, I think she may have been asking if you can override it, uh, you know, if there's a hold or something. I, I think I think that was the question. I'm, oh, I'm... okay. Um, I don't think it matters if there's a, if you can still change the status if there's a hold, you don't need to override. Let me see if I can find a sample. Um, let me go grab a new something. So pardon me while I do work in the background. And effective location is education curriculum. Okay. Okay, so let me actually put a new request on. And then I'm going to discharge it and then we'll go through the routine. Um,
Okay, guys, I'm rather insulted that education is not a pickup service point, so I will use green. <sighs> <laughs> I understand why, actually. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's okay. We're, we're not upset that you guys don't believe. Um, and I want to do it as a hold. Sorry. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to check this in just so that it no longer has an in-process status on it. Okay, so this is one of our curriculum materials. I need to send this to Collection Care to have the book jacket attached. So it's got a request. It's even in transit to Green Loan. I'm going to ignore all of that because I don't think it's going to stop me. So I'm going to go to inventory. Going to relook up Berry Song. And I'm going to go all the way down and I'm going to change temporary location. Actually, I should just do this. And remember, I'm going to pick the the most general collection care that I can, which is the Sewell TS collection care. I'm gonna save and close. And I was able to do that. I was able to do that despite the fact that there's a request on it and that it's actually in transit. Now, if I happen to be at Green, loan desk and I go to check this in because I don't know any better. It's actually going to tell me as a green staff member, oh, I'm supposed to send this to TS Collection Care. And it also, you can see it has a status awaiting pickup, but it should not yet be available, I hope anyway. So I don't know how clear that was. All right. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, I'm assuming that was as clear as mud. And this is this is definitely a session that I think should be repeated once uh, more information um, is known. Yeah, I, I think the, the thing to point out here is that Folio is very much a work in progress as, as folks on the call can gather. We're still developing some of the procedures and some of the settings and things that you know metadata um, is doing. So we're going to try to do our best to keep you appraised as those happen. But I agree with Kelly. We're going to revisit this probably after go live, maybe a month or so beyond that, just to make sure that any new information is rolled out to everybody who needs to know. But in the meantime, if you do have any questions that weren't answered in the session, you think about something after the fact, you know, reach out to us, um, reach out to the Folio support Slack channel. Um, there's also an email, um, sorry, folio dash, let me switch, folio dash support at Jira Sewell. I'll just throw it in the chat for everybody. And you can always send your questions there and that gets responded to by all of the folks who are helping set fully up. <laughs> Thank you both. I think you did a wonderful job. It's hard to present with, with uh, incomplete information, but it was really helpful. Thank you. You're very welcome.
it's all Kelly. So <laughs> she's the one who did all this and set it up. So it's all her. Yeah. So if something goes horribly wrong, come come find me in the basement. <laughs> Blame Kelly. Got it. <laughs> so now I know why you hid yourself away down there. So yeah, uh, yeah. Hard to find. So unfortunately, most of the green staff do know where I am. <laughs> All right, folks, um, thank you so much for joining us. The, um, the video for this will be available for anybody who missed it or, or you have some more questions after the fact. Um, it'll take a little while to get it edited and up on YouTube. Yes, and, and a special thanks to both Harold and Jeanette. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.